What is going on friends, Almost Average here, and welcome back to the Minecraft Hub channel. We have finally done it, we reached 200 days of hardcore Minecraft. I really never thought I would make it this far. I've had so many hardcore attempts that went south way quicker than they should have, but we have finally made it to 200 days of hardcore Minecraft. I'm super proud of everything I've accomplished in this 200 days of hardcore Minecraft. I've only slept twice, so that means I've had a lot of time to get everything done in this world. The first 100 days I really wanted to set myself up for the long run so that I could survive in this world for a long time. So of course I got diamonds, I worked on getting a beacon, I got that by day 30, and I even went and got full netherite armor by about day 80. Of course, you can't really have netherite armor though without great enchantments, so I of course set up a villager trading hall pretty much immediately. I got a villager breeder going in my cave base and pretty much started pumping out villagers by day 20. I feel like I really got myself set up for a long, long run of hardcore Minecraft by doing everything that I did in this first 100 days. I ended on day 100 by defeating the Ender Dragon and I feel like that was a great way to end it off. I also built a potato and carrot farm here that's automatic, but unfortunately it doesn't produce very much and I can't use it very effectively to trade with the villagers. Here we can see that while we have a villager trading hall going, we still have a lot of work to do on the base because there's still stone and dirt on the walls, and really there is so much more to do in this world. Other than the potato and carrot farm, I also got a melon farm and a pumpkin farm set up in the first 100 days so that I could trade with villagers. But by the time I was getting close to the end, I wanted to go and find the portal and defeat the dragon so that I could end off with having defeated the dragon on day 100. Before doing that though, I went back to my base, got some potions ready, and finished off a few final projects that I wanted to do around my base before actually jumping into the portal and taking on the dragon. At this point, I had already defeated the wither, so I was pretty confident about defeating the ender dragon, as that fight is fairly easier than the wither fight. And especially since now I had full netherite armor, I knew it wasn't going to be a problem at all taking on the dragon. But since I still had a few days to go before day 100, the next thing I decided to work on was a redstone door for my base so that it was a little bit better than just having an oak door right at the front of this. So I designed a 3x3 redstone door uh, using a mumbo jumbo design and then I went ahead, went back to the end and took on the dragon. And just like I figured, the fight was very easy. I took basically no damage, got thrown up in the air maybe once or twice, but had potions of slow falling, so it was really no problem at all. With this being done, I headed back to my base and I got to watch the sunrise on day 100. Of course though, since I don't sleep, I had to deal with a few phantoms while trying to watch the sunrise, but now I had finally made it to the biggest goal that I had ever reached in Hardcore Minecraft. And while having full netherite does make things a little bit easier, I still have to deal with a ton of mobs, so it hasn't gotten too easy on me yet. Now that we've covered the first 100 days of Hardcore Minecraft, let's take a look at what I did in the second 100 days of Hardcore Minecraft. To start off, I gave a little base tour showing around my storage room, the villager trading hall. Back here is where my mine and beacon are. Unfortunately, I still haven't built a redstone door here, but that is going to be a project we do in the future to make that part look nice. We of course have the redstone front door, and then right next to us is our villager trading hall. Over here I have a bunch of librarians for enchantments and then a bunch of farmers uh, to get cheap melon and pumpkin trades, which is super useful for getting a ton of emeralds and also a ton of XP. Currently this is how I repair all my mending tools and get any XP I need for enchanting, so it's super useful not having to have a mob farm, but that's definitely a project we will work on in the future as well. Back over in my storage room, we can see here that I have some mass storage set up with the chest and then some storage for smaller items in barrels across all the other walls. This is definitely an area I need to work on as well. I have everything sorted right now, but I do think I will need a bigger storage system very soon as I plan to build a lot of farms in this next 100 days. Also, be sure to check out my personal channel, Almost Average, so you can actually see the weekly updates of this world where I play through this hardcore world, build farms, and everything else that I'm doing over here. Over here, we can see the villager breeder that I set up in the first 100 days, and below it is just where I can move the villagers from here into the trading hall. Outside and on top of my base, I've set up an enchanting table altar, which isn't quite done yet, and this will be one of the projects we finish up first in this world. 
My goal is to cover this whole jungle island in ruins. I'm of course gonna put back all the trees and greenery to make it look like it's super overgrown, but right now we are still working out building the design of this and just the front of it is done so far. We still have a lot of work to do on the back before this is complete. To kick things off in this second 100 days, I went back to the end dimension and decided to head out to the outer islands so that I could get some shulker shells and an elytra. I really wanted to get these things early on so I could start working on some major projects that were going to require some shulker shells to move a lot of materials. I spent a whole 5 days end raiding just to get a few shulker shells and a couple of elytras. I will definitely have to return back to the end dimension soon to get some more shulker shells, but for the time being I have enough. I played this super carefully because I didn't want to risk falling. My pinky was pressed down on shift the entire time, trying not to fall off into the void. Luckily, the netherite armor did keep me very well protected against all the shulkers and especially the endermen whenever I accidentally looked at them. End rating being complete, I went back to the overworld and then the nether just to get some more resources to work on my base. A lot of my base uses the crimson wood and warped wood and also shroom lights, so I had to go back to the nether to get these materials. The next thing I wanted to work on was an automatic wool farm, so I went ahead, went back over to the village area where I knew there were some sheep, and then started transporting them back to my base. I wanted to get this wool farm set up first because I had a major project coming up that was going to require a lot of carpet to prevent mob spawning. So I decided to bring these back to my base, breed them up, and then start getting some different colors of wool automatically outputting into some chests. This was the first farm I decided to do because I knew how simple and easy it was. It wasn't going to be very heavy on my redstone resources and especially my limited resources like iron. I decided to build this next to the villager breeders and underneath the villager trading hall because it was a space I hadn't utilized yet. So I built up an area where I could put the sheep while they were breeding and then next to it is where I actually decided to build the sheep farm. The sheep farm itself is super simple. All you need is an observer and a dispenser filled with shears and it will go ahead and take care of all the wool that you will ever need in your world. The best part of this too is that you can dye the sheep so that you get different colors of wool which will help you out a lot in your world. It's definitely going to save me a lot of time of collecting dyes since I'll automatically have all of the wool colors that I'll need. For the time being however I only have I think 4 white sheep, a couple grey sheep, a green sheep, and I think that's it right now. I'm going to work on some more colors later but these are the colors that I wanted in the beginning. Right across from this wool farm is where I actually decided to do my upgraded potato and carrot farm. As I mentioned before, the potato and carrot farms that I built in the first 100 days were fairly slow at outputting, so I decided to build an upgraded version of this. The design I went with is a two layer design that all feeds back to one villager, so it makes the collection system super easy. This is a super simple design as well, and I did have a few technical problems with it later on, but after getting them sorted out, this farm produces so much and it makes the villager trading with the potatoes and carrots so much easier. After finishing up those two farms, I decided to do some work on cleaning up my base. A lot of the walls were still the outside cave colors, so I need to get rid of all the stone, dirt, and sandstone in order to put in all the deep slate tiles that I was using. I absolutely love the look of this new deep slate block. It's super nice and makes the base look really clean, really dark, and it's very easy to work with other blocks as well, adding bits of color here and there around your base. Unfortunately though, it is a pain to collect. But fortunately, with my haste 2 beacon and efficiency 5 pickaxe, it is a bit easier now than it was when I first started playing this world. After finishing up the walls and the ceiling, I went ahead, went up to the top of my base where the enchantment altar was, and I started working on that. I wanted this thing to look very decayed, and so I used a lot of different stone variants and some deep slate variants as well to make it look like it had been there a while. I'm definitely going to work more on all these variants later on as this is something I want to do basically across the whole island as I build more ruins for other projects that I work on. And of course all this needs to look super overgrown so I'm going to add back all the jungle trees, I'm going to make bushes, and I'm going to make this place look like it's been here for a lot and lot of years. I also have to mention that this is looking amazing so far with shaders. I just tested it out a little bit. I like looking at things I build with shaders on sometimes just to see how things are looking. 
The combination of the altar with the rain and the trees that I started to put in definitely made this place look really cool looking. I love the kind of eerie vibe that it gave and it's definitely something I'm going to try to duplicate as I build more on this island. The vegetation I'm definitely going to increase but I just wanted to get an idea of how it was looking so far. I then also decided to do a ton of netherite mining because I wanted to finish off all the tools that I had so far. I just needed three more pieces of netherite to do my shovel, my axe, and my sword, and then I'd be fine. Unfortunately though, that means I had to find 12 pieces of ancient debris. But after a while of mining, I managed to get all that I needed to have a full complete set of tools. With all this being done, I still really hadn't used my elytra, and the reason for that is because I didn't have rockets and I also had nowhere to fly. So I decided to work on my next big project, and that was a general mob farm. Of course, I could have just built a creeper farm, but I also wanted the string, bones, arrows, and everything else that came from this farm. This is a super great farm design by Nimbon. It produces every hostile mob except for Endermen. Uh, you won't get witches too often, but they do sometimes spawn, so you will get a bit of redstone and whatever else they drop. This was also the biggest project I had done so far in this world, and it's definitely still not complete yet. While the mob farm itself is done and it has been producing in this last 100 days, I do want to do a major design project with it as well. This is actually built over the ocean right next to my base so that it kind of works while I'm in my base, but the project I want to do on it is to make it look like it actually fits in here. And while hiding a project this massive is definitely going to be hard, I have a great idea of what I want to do with it. I'm basically going to build a giant volcano over this, so it's going to be a huge terraforming project that I take on in the future. This volcano is going to connect up with my base, so it should give me a lot more room for storage, which is going to be super nice considering that during this 100 days, I decided to gather a lot of resources. Of course, I was building farms and I needed some packed ice, but while I was out getting the ice, I decided to just mine a ton of that. I ended up with I think two shulker boxes of packed ice, which is of course super useful for item elevators, transportation systems, and everything like that. While boating back to my base, I saw a mesa biome, and I figured why not collect a ton of terracotta. I didn't have any direct plans for it currently, but I decided that this would probably be a block I use a lot of in the future, as I really like all the colors that it has. And you can never really have too many resources in your world, right? My goal for this was basically just to clear all the terracotta off this hill, so I ended up with 2-3 to three shulker boxes of terracotta. Then I went back over near my base and collected up a ton of dark oak. This was going to be the wood I used for making chests and everything that I was going to need for some major projects I was working on. I also realized while gathering resources that a project that I was doing was going to require a lot of honey, which meant I was going to have to start farming some honey. So while I was out near all these forests, I decided to gather a bunch of bees nests and bring them back and start making a honey farm. This was actually the first time I ever worked with bees in Minecraft. I for some reason had never even touched the feature before, but I did build up an automatic honey farm that would produce enough honey for me to do some projects in the near future. The design is super simple and basically just relies on comparators behind the bees nest to activate the dispensers which have bottles inside of them. Everything then drops down into the hoppers underneath and goes into the collection system. While this bee farm is super small, I didn't really need that much honey, so I figured it would be able to fill my needs. While waiting for the honey I needed, I decided to work on a project that didn't need honey, and that was going to be an iron farm. I built this right above my base as well, just so that it could produce a ton of iron while I was working on my base, and this is a super simple design by Nimbon that actually produces a ton of iron. In just two hours of getting this farm up and running, it produced over seven stacks of iron blocks, which is basically enough to make two full beacons. I will definitely swear by this iron farm in every single world I ever work on. It is absolutely amazing at how fast it produces iron. It is, of course, annoying to work with these villagers and getting them all into place, but because of my villager breeder, it is super easy to get them up here at least. After getting all the villagers and the zombie in place, this farm was finally up and running and producing iron golems. It took a little bit to get everything sorted out. There was a couple problems on the north side of this, but after getting that figured out, this thing started producing way more iron than I was ever going to need. 
I absolutely love building overkill farms that produce way more than I need. Even if I don't need it, I at least have those options available. This now being done, it does look super ugly, but that is something we are going to work on. I have a few ideas in mind of how to make this thing look better, but that's going to have to wait for the next 100 days of Hardcore Minecraft. The next thing I decided to work on was actually a transportation system for the melon and pumpkin farms that I had down in my mines. I decided to build a water elevator and bring everything up directly into my storage system so that every time I wanted melons and pumpkins I didn't have to go all the way down in my mine to get them. This was also just a really fun project, I hadn't worked a lot with transportation systems before, so it was nice to do this rather than build the massive farms that I had been doing for the past 75 days. It requires super minimal redstone, basically just a comparator that activates a dispenser which spits everything out into the water stream and brings it straight into my base. With that being done, I started working on my next massive farm design, and that was actually for a bone meal and moss farm. This produces all the variants of moss, the moss carpet, the azalea trees, everything, which is going to be super useful for making my island seem very natural. This is an ill mango design of a bone meal farm, but I altered the collection system so that it actually produces bone meal and moss, and is still self-sufficient so that I'll never have any troubles of running out of either bone meal or moss as long as this is running. This is also the project I needed the honey for as it helps the item transportation system up top and putting the bone meal into the hoppers they were supposed to go in. After getting this thing filled up with some bone meal to kick it off, this thing started working perfectly. It's basically just a stone generator that bone meals moss and then creates all the moss below and the stone then pushes all the moss into the composters. After finishing that up, I went back up to the iron farm because there were still some things I wanted to work on. Of course, the four kill chambers were working perfectly and dispensing all the items into these chests, but I actually wanted to make a unified kill chamber where all these things would be collected right inside my base. So I went ahead and dug down the tunnels of where the iron golems would actually fall and made the kill chambers down there so that they would actually collect right in my base. I instead made it two kill chambers instead of four and basically made it so the north and south side both pushed into the hoppers. This design makes it super easy to collect the iron and have it all in one place, and by doing it this way, all this would be inside my base as well. As you can see though, it's stone all around, and I still have to work on actually connecting it up to my base. But to finish off the 200 days of Hardcore Minecraft, I decided to go and be another boss of the game, uh, kind of a half boss, which would be the Elder Guardians. So I decided to go and clear out the ocean monuments where I knew were super close by, and I figured since I had all the armor to do it, I might as well do it now. Unfortunately, however, there was no sponge rooms in the first ocean monument I cleared, but I did end up managing to find some sponges in the second ocean monument I cleared. So after doing that, I decided to actually drain one and take out all the rooms inside of it so that I had a full ocean monument that I could work on in the future. I absolutely love ocean monument projects and I've never actually done one in my own world, so this is something that I wanted to do too. Even though I cleared this out and got it ready to do a project, this is not something I'm going to be doing for a long time. This will probably be something thousands of days down the road when I run out of projects to do on my main island. I got this entire thing cleared out by day 199 though, so now it was time to head back to my base and do a little celebration of everything I had done in this past 100 days. As the sun rose, I realized I had done so much in this past 100 days. I decided to celebrate and watch the sunrise underneath my iron farm, which was one of my big projects of this 100 days, and I really wanted to celebrate since I had done so much. I didn't end up sleeping a single time in this last 100 days, and that of course has caused many problems with phantoms, but other than that, it's given me a lot of time to get things done. Just in this last 100 days, I had built an automatic wool farm, an automatic potato and carrot farm that produced a lot more than my original designs. I built this amazing iron farm and a super efficient moss and bone meal farm, which is really going to help me out as I turn this entire island into my personal base. That is all that I have for you guys today though. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more of this hardcore world, definitely go check out my personal channel, Almost Average, where I play this series weekly. Also, if you're new to this channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well. We produce a ton of different daily Minecraft content, so you'll definitely like some of the content we have over here. 
Thank you guys so much for supporting me in this 200 days journey though. A lot of you were asking for 200 days right after the first 100 days and I'm pretty happy to have this out fairly quickly after that first 100 days. And considering I play about 25 days of this world a week, we'll probably have the 300 days episode out in about a month from now. That is all that I have for you guys today though. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.